Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another match preview for another football game. I, I know we're, we're not enjoying <laughs> football right now, but the games are coming. We have to preview them. I'm in enemy territory. I'm in the We Are Tottenham TV studios with my guy, Ben. Come on. Sim as well. Come on. Pick up yourself, my guys. Uh, I'm not looking forward to <laughs> Sunday. I'm, I'm really not, but... We're going to delve into everything regarding the game anyway. You guys, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe. I'm sure you guys know we are Tottenham TV. If you guys don't, link is in the title. Link is in the description. Check it out. Subscribe. And yeah, big up everybody that's in here. Um, first thing, um, Ben, I'm going to start with you. Chelsea <laughs> this season, mm. how, how have you made of like watching us? I know from a rival perspective, it's probably been absolutely amazing, but... What's your thoughts been on the fallout from Chelsea and like have you thought of like why we managed to drop off like this? Yeah, I mean, I never understood why you sacked Thomas Tuchel at mm. the beginning. I thought like he's obviously a very, very good manager. And if you're going to sack Thomas Tuchel, I never thought that you should be sacking Thomas Tuchel for a Graham Potter. Um, I heard someone talking on um, Talk Sport. I can't remember who it was. They were talking. He's got close ties to the Chelsea dressing room. And he was saying like, it's just completely different. And they, they never understood why you sacked Thomas Tuchel for Graham Potter. And if they're saying that, the fans are obviously going to be thinking that. And mm. when you're looking at the philosophies of the two managers as well, it's just like completely different. And to change that in mid-season, it's just mad to me. And obviously, you've got the Bowley thing as well coming in mid-season. And he's just like gone in, spent 600 million in a January transfer window. And a lot of players where, you know, you've got to say a lot of the players obviously big up and coming talents but that's all they are at the moment is potential yeah and i think that you've signed well but there are a lot of people that think maybe there's just potential are they going to click how long is it going to take them to click especially with a new manager as well so i'm looking at chelsea and i'm thinking is there much organization behind what you're doing i'm not too sure i've got no no like doubt in my mind i think in a year or two's time i think you're going to be up there mm. But right now, I think you're going to struggle for the next year or two. And I think um, you've brought in way too many players at once, in my opinion. And I think that's reflecting on the pitch at the moment. Yeah, yeah I definitely agree with you on that. Sim, well, what's your thoughts been on Chelsea? Do you think it's a case of like too many cooks in the kitchen as of right now? Or do you think the problem kind of lies a little bit deeper with us? I just think that, look, you. I understand the sacking of Tuchel to an extent because if you see when a new owner comes into a football club, nine times out of ten, they within the first six months, they sack the manager and they want to bring their own guy yeah. in. That's always the case of most new owners. So it doesn't surprise me totally that they that they win that way and they want to bring his own guy. I think Bowley said a lot about how he um, really admires the Arsenal approach and he wants to go, wants to do that kind of thing, have a manager who he can build for the long term with. So if he goes through that whole spiel and he does all that, then and, and, he, and he hires Potter and he gives him 600 million or whatever it is, you can't then go and sack him after a few months. That doesn't make any sense. That, that for me, would show a lack of planning. Um, that, for me, would show lacking a lack of, um, of, of um, sticking to your own plan. It means that you never really believed in your own project at the beginning because there was always going to be bumpy, uh, a bumpy road, a bumpy ride for the approach they've gone through. You've got, Chelsea have just but gone through so much like change. I maybe didn't necessarily think it would be this bad, to be fair, 10th place like and two wins in 16 for sure. But you just got to remember, Potter is literally, he, he, he walks into the dressing room in, in November, he's got one squad. He's literally walked in back after the World Cup, he's got a completely different squad to that squad he's just had. And that even squad he had to sift through. So he was halfway through sifting through that squad, trying to work out who his best players are, who fits where. Now he's got a whole bunch of other players. Now he's got to figure out who, he hasn't even finished figuring out that squad. Now he's got to figure out this squad and fit, figure out who fits where and everything. Every, all these players are signed for such big money. They've all got big egos. They all want to play. They all, want to, they all think they're the star. They all think um, that, you know, they're the man pretty much you had sterling in the summer you signed him for however much it was 50 million he thinks yeah. he's a star he came to get game time and now you've got mudrick <laughs> who's come for 100 million and he wants the game time you've got felix on loan he's only going to be here for six months he wants the game time so potter's got to figure this all out of course it's going to be a bit of a shit show for a bit i think it's no surprise for me uh, obviously with that quality you look at the, the the players you have and you're thinking obviously you shouldn't be 10th like you've got a better squad than fulham brighton blah 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 who spurs. brentford spurs you probably 
probably you probably even have a better squad than Liverpool, Spurs, uh, probably Arsenal. You probably have a better squad than Arsenal. I'm not even joking. Like you have an unbelievable squad, but it's just but but they're all young. There's all a lot of money. It's all so much on a manager who's never managed at this level as well. You got to remember he's he's been not used to these kind of expectations that he has. That he like a Brighton and a, a Ostersons and wherever he was before Swansea. Swansea yeah. Like he wasn't expected to challenge for titles and top four Champions League a high level every single. It's like he, for Brighton, he went two months out winning a game and no one cared. It was like cool. Like it's, as long as you're getting mm. mid table, you're cool. At Chelsea, if you go two months without winning, it's a crisis, and that's it's a what, different level. What I'm surprised about Potter though is the actual style of play and how he's mm. implementing that style of play because he had such a distinct style of play at Brighton. You know, they were called XGFC because they just created so many chances they just couldn't put it back of the net. I'm not seeing that anything like that at Chelsea at the moment. I don't know. They are still our XG teams oh, at the moment. Yeah. They are. Yeah, there's games like <laughs> Dortmund. There's games like Fulham. Even the second half against Southampton, I always say this thing with us: either we don't create enough, or when we do, we the ball goes everywhere except the back of the net. It will hit the keeper, it will hit one of our own players. There'll be a goal line clearance, but the ball won't cross that line. Mm. It just won't. That's why, like, I get with Potter, I, I see the whole thing is just a mess from top to bottom. Like the players, they don't really apply themselves well enough. The manager doesn't help himself out tactically. <laughs> we are a mess, and this is the least confident that I've ever been going into a Tottenham v Chelsea game. But from an opposite perspective, Ben, how are you feeling going into the game on Sunday? I mean, it's... Look, we don't have a good record against you lot. We haven't beaten you since 2018. That's a little while ago now when Sonny um, absolutely um, took it past Rudiger and David Luiz at that night at Wembley, which was brilliant. But we've just been shocking every time we've played you since then. And I'm looking at it right now and I'm thinking, if we don't beat you this weekend, then we're literally never going to beat you again. That's it. That is, like, that's it. And like that, for that sense, I'm a bit confident going into it. We've turned it around at home recently. We've gone in two big games against West Ham and Man City. We've kept two clean sheets, won the game 1-0 and 2-0. Um, so you, I'm going into it with a bit of confidence, but I'm always going to be wary because of the way we usually play against you lot. Yeah, I would understand that as well of the history. But for you as well, uh, what's your thoughts going into the game? And do you also, what would a win against Chelsea mean, not just for the fans, but for the team going into the rest of the campaign? Um, I think I still think it'll be a massive confidence boost. Look, we've had a, we recently beat Man City at home, and by by all accounts, as much as I, I do fear Chelsea because of their squad, obviously that that would always be a bigger win because they're a more fun, functioning team right now. But of course, beating Chelsea in a in a in a London derby would be absolutely massive, especially for the fans. I think we still consider it a, a pretty big rivalry, maybe not as big as Arsenal, but it's still quite a big rivalry. So it would be it would be absolutely massive, with, uh, especially at home. We don't want to get beaten on on our own patch just happened way too often against Chelsea I think we haven't scored a goal against them in the new stadium I don't no, think not, in the not with fans um, yeah not in the league so uh, that that has to be put right on Sunday 100% but I am wary the fact that your squad is chock, chock full of quality absolute quality and I wouldn't put it past Potter and Chelsea to finally find a working system just in time for Tottenham because you're just like as much as Chelsea want to clown on themselves and and and, and pan the bad results and and with 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 re reason as well because the results have been terrible I mean losing at home to bottom place Southampton is absolutely unacceptable but I'm watching them games I'm like Southampton you could have easily won that game Sterling had two shots kid off the line you could have easily won Dortmund uh, Jao Felix hit the bar you had a number of chances could have easily won that game you lost away at Fulham when you were much the better team and then Felix gets sent off and you end up losing like I I, I like I am seeing Chelsea get like like you're pretty much like you're like on the brink of a lot of results but it's not going your way at the moment and I'm just worried that you come up against Tottenham and then it's going to start going your way and everyone's going to so see typical it as, as well, and I, but everyone's going to see it as a shock and I'm going to be like I mean it is is it's kind of a shock but it isn't because they they have a lot of quality and the the results they've been getting I know you've been getting terrible results but I think a lot of them you you deserve better for the performances in my opinion. I don't think it'll be a shock at all if mm. Chelsea win this weekend and I'm speaking to a lot of Spurs fans this week and at the game last weekend and they're all just like of that feeling oh we got Chelsea next week oh same again. Uh, yeah I would love to say that with us but I think everyone's walking into this game expecting a loss. There's, <laughs> there's. I don't think faith in the manager has ever been this low. Faith in the squad has just never really been there, in all honesty. The only reason why I could see us winning this game is just because it's Tottenham, and they only turn up for Tottenham. Even the last time, like, we were crap against Everton first game of the season, one off a Jorginho penalty, played well against you lot, 
Lost three 0 to Leeds the next week. Mm. One thing I definitely, I definitely would say is that Chelsea's confidence is clearly very low right now. I think that's clear because. Chelsea seem to be playing very well in games and then when something goes against them, their heads seem to drop and then all mm. of a sudden they can't like gain, regain that situation. They lose control of the match. So we just got to make, whereas as a Spurs fan, as a um, thing of Spurs, we have to make sure that we don't let Chelsea settle in this game. We're making sure that like a very similar to our Man City game where we just picked our moments to really press them and, and made sure that their build-up play was that they weren't able to build through the centre and they weren't able to play their football. We've got to make sure that we do the same to Chelsea and not let them settle in the game and and let them play their pretty football and pass the ball around because if we do and we let them gain confidence then Chelsea have more than enough quality to win this game but if we can just maybe nick an early goal or, or unsettle Chelsea early doors then I think they, I think Chelsea's confidence is low in that aspect yeah. and then I think if something does start to go against Chelsea then I think you might see their head drop especially if the, if, you know, if, if the crowd is roaring and they're away from home in a that's London the derby one. that's what we I'm feeling like an, we don't like a good, a good away crowd we always always falter with a good away crowd if we concede early, if we don't if we don't do anything well with our thirty minute run of form that we always seem to have, that is it. So yeah, I am not looking forward to this one. But we're gonna end it on score predictions. I'm going to go for a humble little nil nil. Nice little nil nil. Draw one point close to the big forty, as you guys already know. Ben, what's your score prediction? Look, I think that we can stifle you on the weekend if we get Romero really pushed up to Felix and get him to just cut off the lines to Felix and really just stick on him like glue. Mm. And I think if we can neutralise Felix, then I think that neutralises a lot of the threats that you have uh, bringing forward to us um, on the weekend. And I think that will happen. Uh, you saw Romero on the weekend. You saw him against uh, Man City. I thought he was brilliant in both of those games. And I'm, I'm backing him to do it again this weekend against Chelsea. Um, I'm going to go for 1-0 to Spurs. All right, cool. And Sim, what <laughs> yeah. are you thinking? I mean, for me, everything logically, for me, points to Tottenham just edging this but I know football's not played on paper and I'm just where I'm just so wary of Chelsea just turning up like it was for me it's all about like that season when you were absolutely god awful and you like nearly got relegated and yet the one game you turned up for was Tottenham at home and we were much and, better and, then as and well. we were much better then mm. and and and, that, and I'm always wary of Chelsea they just have a way of whatever's going on with them they turn up in this game and that really pisses me off so I am wary of that <laughs> I am wary of that, but I'm going to go with Tottenham. Tottenham one nil. Chelsea, please, please, just just one one day, that's just one day turn up. That's all I ask for, and then all your sins will be forgiven. But until then, it's all been real. Well, most. most. It's been a very long season, but we'll be making progress. But it has been a great video as always. Big up to Ben. Come on. Big up to Sim for having you. us in. Cheers, as bro. always, check out We Are Tottenham TV. Link will be in the description. Link will be in the title, and we'll see you Sunday. Like, subscribe. And up the chance. Come on, you guys.